Hi, my name is Elizabeth Oliver and I'm a coloratura soprano based in Philadelphia. Thank you for joining me today for my recital. Uh, this recital came together in a pretty organic way. Uh, all of the pieces, well most of the pieces on this program are pieces that I worked on that I learned for the first time during the pandemic. And the pieces that are on this recital that I knew in the past um, were very um, old pieces to me and I pulled them out and reworked them during the pandemic. So this is like my uh, presentation to the class, like what I did during the pandemic, what I learned, how I grew as an artist and I guess also as a person. Um, so uh, instead of uh, doing the typical thing, which is to uh, give a synopsis of each piece and then some information about the composer, things like that, I am going to explain why I chose these pieces for this program, um, why they earned their place on this recital. Uh, it, so the, the first piece on the program is Son Virgin Vezzosa from I Puritani by Bellini. And the reason this one is first is because, um, well, it's a lot of fun for me to sing, uh, but it is also one of the pieces that I used at the very beginning of the pandemic to uh, learn how to use my my camera and my my microphone and how to, just how to record, how to edit, how to put everything together. Um, so as I was learning the piece, I was also learning how to use all of these new technologies or technologies that are new to me. So, and as I said, it's, it's really fun for me to sing. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
piece on the program and that is a piece by Mozart. It is a concert aria that um, singers back in Mozart's time would insert into an opera if they didn't like the piece that was written for them to sing. It was common practice back then to just take a piece by another composer and insert it into an opera that you were performing if you didn't like the piece that was written for you. I mean it's totally insulting but that's what they used to do. Uh, but this piece is one that I learned when I was just out of college, and it is, it, it's, it, as a singer, it's interesting to go back to a piece that you had worked on when you were younger and, and gauge where you are now as an artist, as a person, and find the places that you can improve, you can tweak, and where, where you've grown, where you've changed. And uh, so that's why I put this on the program.
it as soon as you hear it. You've heard it in, you know, Bugs Bunny or Tom and Jerry or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's a very common tune. Um, and it can be done in a couple different ways. Uh, some people sing it, the piece very quickly, some sing it very slowly. Um, I can do it either way. Um, this, this recording, I leaned toward the, the, the more languorous version because the first time I went to Italy, um, I was in my 20s, and it was the first time that I really slowed down and I was present in the moment. And it just, everything was vivid and humid and flavorful and sonorous and it was it was just the most lovely expansive eye-opening experience and um, this piece reminds me of that and I wanted to evoke that that feeling and so that is why I'm presenting it the way I'm presenting it with this tempo with this sort of rolling back and forth of the gondola on the water.
from another Mozart opera. Um, I believe it's pronounced Zeda. Um, it, it was never finished. And um, so I'm not gonna go into the plot because it ultimately it doesn't really matter that it was never finished. Um, but this piece, I mean, this piece is just so lovely. It, it's just sort of dreamy and very happy. And for whatever weird reason, it reminds me of one of my dogs who passed away a few years ago. And um, I don't know, it's a, it, that's the strangest thing to think because the words mean it, it has nothing to do with a dog. But just the lovely sort of lullaby of this piece makes me think of my cute little happy dog. Um, so that's one reason that I'm including it. Also, um, I learned this piece during the pandemic, and it was one of the, it was one of the first pieces that I recorded. Um, so it is it's special to me because it's part of that whole learning process, learning how to record, pushing myself to learn new things, learn new skills, and so. Yeah, so I included it because it, it earned it, it. It should be holding its proper place as part of my as part of my my COVID skills.
Durch Zärtlichkeit und Schmeicheln comes from Mozart's opera, uh, The Abduction from the Seraglio. Um, Blonde, this character, is just a little ball of piss and vinegar, and I absolutely love her. I had the joy of playing this role once, and um, I identify with her quite a bit. And I think that there are aspects of her that are that really fit my personality well, which was why it was so much fun for me to play this character. Uh, I, I don't really know what that says about me, but um, but I really enjoy her and I enjoy this piece. And so I thought it would be fun to present it for you. People will call it Adele's laughing song. It comes from the operetta Die Fledermaus by Strauss. And um, I picked this because this is one of the last things that I sang in college um, in, a, in a recital setting. And I got a, a lot of good praise for it, which was, you know, it was really nice as a student to leave college quite literally on a high note, uh, feeling like, okay, you've learned some things. You're, 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 you're good. You're ready. And, uh, that, that's why this piece is here. <laughs> Please just talk, I'm not too sure. 
1950s. The fragments were written in the 1950s and it's been revised and uh, it's been presented more recently. Um, uh, the first time I heard this piece was on a compilation CD by the American soprano Halloran Blackwell and I just fell in love with it. It's just beautiful and warm and it just, it feels like a big, like a big hug. And um, I've always wanted to do it. And frankly, the, the low notes were a little intimidating for me, but pandemic, there was time, I worked on it. So now I'm presenting it for you. Thank you. 
Blah 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 is a funny little piece by Ira Gershwin. Um, and the reason I put this on here, I mean, aside from the fact, I think it's funny, I think it's cute, but um, it reminds me of going to um, one of those benefit events, one of those ticketed things. You get all dressed up, you pay your ticket, you have your ticket, and you have food and drinks with strangers. And uh, one time I went to one of those and this very elegant, very drunk woman kind of latched herself onto me for hours. <laughs> and I just could not get rid of her. And um, so, I mean, it's really just kind of an inside joke for me, but I mean, that's, that's what this piece makes me think of and it just amuses the hell out of me. <laughs> so that's why it's on the program. from his, um, his version of Romeo and Juliet is a pretty standard piece in the repertoire. And I know I don't need to tell you the story of Romeo and Juliet, so we don't need to do that. Uh, but the reason I picked this piece is because I just, I love the way that he was able to capture that, that giddy teenage excitement of not being in love, but almost being in love and just feeling that, that that vibration, that a vibration that things are happening, something's about to happen, it's all exciting, everything is just laid out before you, and the moment where you're aware, you're aware that this is special, this is exciting, this is the time, and and it's now. And um, I, I mean, really, I just, I, it, I, think, I think that that message that, it I mean it communicates over the over the centuries. It's the teenagers are the same. They that hasn't changed, and um, 
So that, that's why I've included this. Oh, so. 